So first thing we're gonna do is head over to the main Orange Pi website, and we're gonna go to downloads. We're gonna find the Orange Pi device we want to find downloads for. I'm rocking the default Orange Pi 5 here. I've got the four gig model, and we're gonna scroll down to JellOS. JellOS just stands for Just Enough Linux Operating System. And it's gonna take us straight to their GitHub site. And we just have our newest image here from 10.3. And we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find the image that is for our device, which is the Orange Pi 5 right here. So we're gonna download this. Next up, we're gonna head over to Belina Etcher and download our imaging software. So this is the software that's going to take the image that we downloaded from Orange Pi or downloaded from JellOS's GitHub, and it's going to actually make it into a bootable SD card. So now that we've got Belinda Etcher installed and we've got our image downloaded, you're gonna to wanna to extract that so that you get the image file here, the .img, and that's the file that we're gonna to use to select for Belinda Etcher. So your image file will be here. There's our file path. And then we are gonna select our SD card here to image, and then we're just gonna flash. It's gonna take a little while, a few minutes, so just let that cook for a bit, and then we'll be ready to insert it into our Orange Pi 5. All right, so let's backtrack a little bit, and I'll explain exactly how imaging an SD card actually works. If you're already familiar with how imaging an SD card works, go ahead and skip to the next chapter. I'm gonna explain this in terms of a moving company. So first things first, the moving company is gonna pick a room to tackle first. In this case, let's choose our office slash gaming room, because that's what I'm kind of sitting in right now. And let's compare that to our operating system, which is Jell OS. So the object of this is to get that gaming room boxed up, put it in a truck, moved over to another house, and unpacked exactly the way you want it. So people that have never moved houses before may think it's just as simple as putting the things in a box, moving them over to the new room, and unpacking them just the way that they were in the previous room. Well, everyone knows that's not the case. The new room's gonna have a different layout. The door's gonna be in a different place. Windows are gonna be in a different place. The same sentiment goes into imaging your SD card. You don't just take the files from a zip folder, extract them onto your SD card, pop it out, and then pop it into your new device. It will not work that way. There's a process that has to take place in order for it to exist and work on the new device that you plug it into. And you know, there's already some processes in place from the moving company, as well as instructions from the homeowners. The movers in the truck are gonna to need to know where they need to go. So they're gonna to need to know the address. They're gonna to need to know where they can park their truck. And they're gonna to need to know the location of the new office slash game room in the new house. That's where Belinda Etcher comes into play. So you've already downloaded your file from GitHub and extracted the .img file onto your computer. You're gonna take that .img file, that'll act as kind of your boxes. And the truck driver in the truck are gonna act as Belinda Etcher. It knows the exact place where the files need to go, how to extract them, and how to format that SD card exactly the way it needs to be so that it will only work in that Orange Pi 5. So now that our truck is boxed up and ready to go, aka our Belinda Etcher software has selected the right .img file as well as the right SD card that it wants to image. We just click start or flash on Belinda Etcher and just let it take care of the rest. Just like we sit back and let those movers take care of the move for us. So now we've got our feet kicked up and we're just waiting to move into our new house, right? We just have to sit there and let that SD card image. And as soon as it's done, we can go ahead and pop it out and pop it into our Orange Pi 5. And that process is just like taking those boxes out, putting them in the new room, unpacking everything exactly the way you want it so that when you walk into your new house in your new office and game room, everything will be exactly the way you want it. Hopefully this helped you out if you're new to this whole thing. Let's get back to it. All right, so now that we've got our SD card formatted and ready to go, we've inserted it into our Orange Pi 5 and we're ready for our first boot. And there we go. We have our Gel OS booting up. It's a really fast boot. This operating system boots super fast. Boom, and we're done. All right, so now that we have a successful boot, we are ready to go ahead and set up Gel OS for gaming. It's not ready quite yet out of the box. We're gonna have to add a few things to get that started. But as you can see, we'll navigate around the menus here. I just have a keyboard and mouse connected to it right now. And if you notice here, I've cheated a little bit and went ahead and got a PS2 emulator working on here. And as you can see here, as I scroll around the main menu, there's not much here. That's because it comes pretty much bare bones. The emulators are already installed there, but if you don't have any games installed on the emulators, they just won't show up. But if you look at the file structure, you'll see that it has a ton of emulators pre-installed on it. Now keep in mind one thing that it doesn't have pre-installed are the BIOS files for each console, because that is not legal to do. If you want to find the BIOS for your favorite console that you want to use, you're going to have to use your Google skills and find that for yourself. But there are tons of guides out there, I'm sure, on the World Wide Web. Just remember to proceed with caution and check the legalities in your state or country 
symmetry before you proceed. But luckily for me, I am somewhat of a retro game collector, so I have the actual original hardware for all the games that I play, and I'll just leave it at that. Now you're probably wondering, how do I get the game files on the Orange Pi 5? Now generally, there are a couple of methods that you can do. One of them, the easiest way, would be just manually installing them onto the SD card that you imaged. There should be a directory there where you can navigate to the ROM folders and upload the ROMs there onto the SD card and then pop it back into your Orange Pi 5. Well, that takes a long time. It's not very convenient. And being the Linux propagandist that I am, I want to teach you guys about SSH. Now, SSH stands for Secure Shell. I'll give you a quick analogy. Imagine you have a special diary where you write all of your secrets. Now you want to share some of those secrets with your best friend, but you don't want anyone else to read them. So instead of shouting them across the playground or passing a note that anyone can read, you use a special code that only you and your best friend can understand. SSH acts as that special code. It's a way for computers to talk to each other over a network in a secure language that only they understand. This ensures that no one else, like hackers, can understand or interfere with what they're saying. So just like you protect your secrets with a special code, computers use SSH to keep their conversations private and safe. And today we're gonna to use SSH to form that connection between my Windows PC here and my Orange Pi 5. They're both on the same network, connected to the same switch, so they should be able to talk to each other. You can confirm that by pinging the IP address of your Orange Pi 5. Let's get started. So here we have our Orange Pi 5 menu and I wanna find out what the IP address of my Orange Pi 5 is so I can try and ping it. And we have an IP address of 192.168.1.172. Now let's take a look at my favorite SSH program for Windows. It's called MOBA Xterm. MOBA Xterm isn't just an SSH client. It also has a lot of other features that I use for work and for play. You have this split mode where you can open four terminals at once and SSH into four things at once by using multi-exec. You can execute the same command for multiple machines at the same time, which I use for work all the time if I have to do bulk updates for all these different Linux machines. But for this case, we're just gonna use it to SSH into our Orange Pi 5. And then also while we do that, MOBA Xterm term opens up its file directory so we can drag and drop files to it from our Windows machine. So first, let's verify that we can actually SSH to our Orange Pi 5 by pinging it. 192.168.1.172. And great, we can ping it. So we know that our Orange Pi 5 is up on our network. That's a good sign. Now we're going to try and SSH to it. Now this is gonna be a little bit more tricky because to SSH to a device, you need to know its username and you need to know its password. Like the analogy I mentioned earlier about the secure note speaking in a language that you can only understand, you're gonna to have to know the username and password of the device that you're connecting to. That's just, you know, basic security. So right here is our host name. That's what we want. I've changed the host name to something else. I just change it to Pi because it's a little bit easier to use. You know what I mean? But we also have to know the password. So let's go over to system settings. So as we scroll down here, we see our root password is root. Root is what we want to log into the Orange Pi 5 as. It's kind of like logging into a Windows machine as administrator so that every time you try to do something important, you don't get that prompt that says, hey, you have to sign in as administrator or hey, this is only allowed for administrators. You're logged in as administrators. So you can do whatever you want. You can delete whatever files you want without any question from the operating system. So we have our username, which is Pi, and we have our root password, which is root. So let's go back over to our Windows machine and MOBA X term, SSH. We're gonna do our username, which was Pi. We're gonna do at, and then we're gonna do the IP address of our orange Pi, 192.168.1.172. And then we're gonna do space dash P. The dash P stands for port. And we're gonna do port 22, which is the SSH port by default for most machines. Enter, and what is our password? Our password was root. Enter. Uh oh. Oh, it doesn't like the password. Why don't you like root? Let's see what's wrong. Let's do some live troubleshooting here. Let's go back to our system settings. Let's click on root. Let's change it to something else. Let's change it to orange pie. Let's just do a new password check. So let's press up on our keyboard to bring our old command back. Enter. Let's try orange pie. No, let's try something else here. Let's try a different username. Let me try root as my username here. And let me try orange pie. It's my password. There we go. So username root and then the password that you set. So as you can see here at the bottom, we have our nice welcome screen, Jell OS, along with the version number and the build date. 
And then under that, you see our host name that we gave it. So remember we gave it pi as our host name? Um, I'm not sure why it wanted us to log in with root. I'll have to look that up. But the most important thing that we see here is this pound sign that's next to our cursor. That means that we are logged in as root. If you don't see the pound sign there, that means you're not logged in as root and you need to log in as root. You can log in as root by typing sudo space su space dash that's how i like to log in as root on ubuntu and then you'll type your root password that you gave it which was orange pie but now we're logged in as root and let's check our ip address and make sure we're logged into the right box so this command is called if config if config and that is going to be like ip config on windows so as we can see here we have our ethernet interface which has our ip address there we don't have a wi-fi interface because the orange pie 5 doesn't have wi-fi remember that but now that we're logged in we see over here also, we have file structure. These are all the files of the Orange Pi 5. I don't have to take it off the network. I don't have to move it around. I don't have to take the SD card out. I can manipulate the file structure all right here. If we click on ROMs, we have all of our beautiful emulators. Remember I mentioned the BIOS files earlier, they go in here. Not gonna open that up. We're gonna keep that bad boy sealed up. But. I went ahead and went in there and threw a PS2 game on here. And we're gonna play a PS2 game here in a minute. There's another command I like to run. It's called htop, H-T-O-P. And that's Linux version of task manager. You can kind of see all your tasks running, their process ID, how much memory they're using. We have our four gigs of RAM. We have all of our CPU cores, zero to seven. We have our uptime, we have our load average, we have our tasks. You can run this on your Windows machine while you play your Orange Pi 5 and kind of keep up to date on how the resource uses is looking. So maybe we'll keep this down at the bottom of our screen while we test out a game on our Orange Pi 5. So I don't have a USB controller on me right now that has thumbsticks on it, so it's gonna be hard to play this PS2 game, but I have this little NES controller that I'll use that's USB that works perfectly fine and it'll work for, uh, for most things here. But let me show you how to format a controller really quick. I've got my controller connected. Now let's see how to set it up. Haven't set one up yet on JellOS, so this will be new. So let's go down to our controller and Bluetooth settings and let's do a controller mapping. One game pad detected, hold A, holding A on my little NES controller here. And then, oh, uh oh, I goofed up, I goofed up. All right, so let's set up our controller again here. All right, so we hold down A, and then we have to select our mapping that we wanna do. Now be careful here because any button you press is gonna get mapped automatically. So we're gonna go up on our D-pad, down, left, right, start, Select A button, B button, X button, Y button, left shoulder, right shoulder. And now that pretty much fills up my NES controller. The NES controller doesn't have much more to do after that. So we just hold any button to skip to the next button. So we'll hold, hold, and then we get to the OK. And now we should be able to move freely around. Nice. So yeah, using a controller, this is much more intuitive. This is how you want to use the operating system. So now let's go over to PS2. So we have our resource uses down here. I don't know how well you can see it. Let me blow it up a little bit. We see we have a couple of cores that are that are going right now. So we have our uh, our five, our core five, core six, core seven. They're pumping a little bit out. Core two is doing a little bit of work here. We've got about half of our no not even we've got one gig of our ram consumed right now so ram's doing okay ram's doing good um that's my number one worry because i got the the smallest orange pi 5 as far as ram is concerned so um so yeah ram's chugging along it look it's looking looking good the panthers are zero and five at the recording of this video i'm just getting nostalgic here really quick remember in the good old days so let's see how this looks since i won't probably be able to actually play a game i will simulate this with cpu all right so we've got the game loading here we see our our cores are cranking up here our high cores i have to do some research to see which cores these are but yeah the the higher level cores four through seven are really cranked up now keep in mind it stops at seven it's an eight core you may be going hey this has eight cores why is it seven because core zero but yeah it's chugging along man ps2 it's crushing it like it always has this, this isn't like a surprise to me i've always known the orange pi 5 can crush ps2 um i have a couple of videos on it so it's nothing new to me that the the orange pi 5 is is doing well with ps2 um because this is just this is just stock so there's a lot of room for 
some flexing here where you can upgrade the graphics a little bit, but that's a video for another day. Right now, we have our Orange Pi 5 working with a PS2 emulator. Looks great. Jake DeLome, you look great, my man.